Hey everybody, hope all is going well with you and that things are good in your world. Wanted to talk to you a little bit today and in some of these subsequent videos about how I got involved with Gigi and you know what the work that we did together was and you know maybe clear up some um, <clears throat> misconceptions and um, untruths <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, as I told in the Harbor Club video, I, uh, I was late to the Gigi party in terms of his music and um, I didn't really get into him or his music, I should say, until <clears throat> around 1989. Um, I, I saw the Harbor Club show. And before that, I saw this interview in Maximum Rock and Roll. Now, I'd been a you know, music fan and been going to concerts and hardcore shows and you know, lived all around, lived in New York City. Used to hang out at, at CBGB's for hardcore matinees all the time. Saw, you know, the Butthole Surfers shows, the Hardcore Reunion of the Bad Brains, you know, lots of great shows. You know, Flynn's in Miami. Uh, shout out to Malcolm Tent. Um, but, uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't into Gigi's music. I didn't know about it until, you know, till 89 when I saw the show and that show blew my mind. Couldn't believe it. So I kind of wanted to get a little deeper into his music and, um, find out what made this guy tick, you know, cause it was so intense. So, you know, I, I, I was actually taken aback at the difference between the Jabber stuff and the stuff, you know, um, on the Freaks album, you know, as I kind of dug into his cat catalog a little more. So, um, then I discovered and got the Dr. No Mayhem album. And this is when it really kind of clicked in for me. I heard Darkness in a Bottle of Hold. And then I got the, uh, which I thought was amazing, this, this acoustic stuff he was doing. I thought, whoa, this is some powerful stuff, you know. Actually, to me, it was more powerful and impactful than his other uh, stuff that he did. Anyway, so I got the um, the Trouble Troubadour EP, and that just blew my mind. Now, at the time, I was listening to uh, Hurt Me, the Johnny Thunders acoustic EP. And uh, like I said, I, I loved the acoustic stuff that Gigi was doing. My idea you know, immediately became, what about if we could take some of this acoustic stuff he's doing and maybe just polish it up a little bit, you know, kind of not as polished as like the Thunders album, but maybe not as raw as some of the stuff he did. So, you know, that was my initial uh, idea. Um, one day I came home from uh, class and uh, there was a, I was going to school at USF um, actually, I, I take that back. I was actually over on the other coast. I was going to school in Fort Pierce at the time, a little community college there, finishing up a few things before I moved over to Tampa. Anyways, um, but I read this CMJ interview uh, where Gigi was on his hunger strike. He had, at that point, was in, in uh, jail in Michigan. And um, there was an address there to write him, so I wrote him. And my idea at the time was I wanted to do a zine, and um, I, I thought, cool, this will be a perfect way to kick off the zine, interview with Gigi Allen for the first issue. Um, so we did the interview, and uh, you, you may or may not have seen it. I, I've published it in, like, uh, different zines over the years, and, um, you know... Uh, but it was pretty in-depth, and Gigi was really cool about answering the questions in-depth, not like yes, no. I did Gigi interviews with him before it was like that, um, mostly when he was drinking. But uh, if you caught him at the right time, he would go in-depth about things. Anyway, so um, we did this interview. Uh, we, we talked on the phone. We started talking on the phone at this point a lot, and, um, you know, Gigi and I kind of, um, I guess we had some sort of a rapport together or whatever. 
Um, we had good conversations. So he started entrusting me to do some press releases for him and, um, you know, send out correspondence. Um, we did snail mail blasts at the time of, of the mission statement. You know, uh, I basically would do, if, if he needed corresponding done while he was in prison for those kind of things, he entrusted me to do it, and I did it. Um, and as, as we rolled along, then the topic of the Ann Arbor incident came up. And I'm going to do a whole video about the Ann Arbor incident and what happened to it and all that. But it was kind of a book project that Gigi and I were, were heavily working on for a long time, probably about a year. It never saw the light of day. Um, but Gigi and I became pretty close when we were working on it. And that eventually led to um, me meeting up with him when he got out and went up to North Carolina to do the vocals for the Anti-Scene album. I was in photography uh, class at the time at, at USF in art school, so I asked if I can come up and do a, um, a photo shoot with him for it as well. He agreed. And Jeff Clayton, uh, you know, gave his blessing, so I was up there for that weekend. And again, another video on that coming up soon but um you know a lot happened that weekend too so Gigi and that was the first time we got to to actually physically meet each other we had been on the phone for countless hours over the last years and you know some of those uh recordings I recorded some of our phone conversations and you know I'll be releasing those on the channel as well but um so I, de I delivered the transcript to him, and, um, you know, we got to know each other a little more that weekend. Um, and that weekend, that's actually where the bones for Carnival of Excess were born. Um, I, I, you know, had this idea with Gigi at that time to do, um, to do a full acoustic album, not just a couple songs here, a little EP there. I wanted to do a full-length, full-on acoustic record and Gigi was way into it he liked his acoustic music a lot um and like I said earlier I think his acoustic stuff was uh, honestly some of his most powerful and impactful uh, uh stuff that he did in his catalog anyway so he was into the idea and um as time went on uh you know he went back to to where he was I believe he was in in the Ann Arbor Y at that point I went back to Florida, we continued to talk, and then as, as we talked, that was in May. Actually, it was funny, because that, that weekend that Gigi was at Jeff's place doing the vocals for the Anti-Scene album, that was on Mother's Day, which was kind of funny. Um, anyways, uh, so in, uh, when, we, when, Gigi came, when I brought Gigi to Tampa, uh, that was in July, so it was a you know, month or two in between that we had talked on the phone, and then we... Um, we, we kind of flushed out Carnival a little more. Instead of just being an acoustic record, we decided to go, let's go full on and make a, a full on country record with this. And we did. Um, and, uh, you know, I initiated the help of uh, Bob Widenhofer and um, Paul Reller, who, uh, without those two guys, Carnival of Excess doesn't exist. Uh, so it, it needs to be, you know, very much stated and the credit needs to be given to those guys because uh bob wrote the music he gave me a cassette you know i sent it up to Gigi, and literally i don't know maybe a day later he he called me and said yeah i got the lyrics done you know let's go so you know i got him plane tickets did all the arrangements you know we we um we just uh, put it all together, brought him to Tampa, and, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. Now, there was lots of antics and, you know, uh, different stories and everything. I've, I've read some of these fantastic stories, or I should say I've heard some of these stories on these YouTube uh, documentaries about Gigi where they <laughs> talk about him coming to Tampa and smashing out all the windows of the house and destroying the place and... And, um, gosh, what else did they say uh, that, that he, uh, I don't know what. <laughs> it, it just makes me laugh at some of these stories uh, that come out about this. Um, the fact of the matter is, 
when Gigi was in Tampa, we were very focused. Um, yeah, we partied. You know, you've seen the footage and, and whatnot, but we did a lot that week. I mean, we we did the acoustic recordings, uh, which became Bleeding, Stinking, and Drinking. Um, we did photo shoots. We did video shoots. We recorded Carnival of Excess. Um, you know, Gigi and I used to go swimming a lot. We went to restaurants. We, uh, yeah, we would rent movies. Henry. We rented Henry and had movie night one night, uh, which was a lot of fun. So uh, all the these uh, stories about Gigi coming to Tampa, destroying my house, abusing everybody, and doing whatever. It's all crap. It's not true. Uh, I'll be unfolding the story of all of this in the coming episodes and tell you a little bit about the antics and everything. But, you know, Gigi and I ended up, uh, we had a good relationship together in terms of working. We had a really good working relationship. And, and I think Gigi, you know, trusted me to get this stuff done. Um, because I, I, you know, I followed through on my word. It wasn't BS. Um, and Gigi, he was very leery because obviously he, he had dealt with a Dealt with a lot of people over the years, burned a lot of bridges. And look, I knew exactly, you know, uh, what Gigi was at that point and what he was about. And I knew that it, it could be bad. It could go south. I, I absolutely knew that, you know. I mean, everybody at the time was going, don't bring that dude to your house. He's crazy. I knew it. I'd seen him. I knew Gigi well enough. Um, but I took the chance because I thought it was important to document um, this acoustic music with him, at which later turned out to be more than acoustic music. Um, but I just thought it was important. So, you know, we, we ended up doing, like I said, Bleeding, Stinking, and Drinking. And I also released it called uh, Uncool, um, Unplugged, you know, which is just kind of the uh, Uncool, Unclean, Unplugged, which is just acoustic stuff. And of course, Carnival of Access, the audio, the video. In fact, if you want to see the full video, I, I have it for free on the channel. Go check it out. It, it's Gigi in a different light. Um, him talking about his life and his philosophy and jail and some of the other stuff. Um, so it, it's, it's very interesting. You can check that out. You can also, you can listen to all the um, music uh, that I have of Gigi's. It's all up on Spotify and all the usual streaming places. Um, so check it out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, like I said, in the subsequent episodes, I'm going to be talking more specifically about some of the things that we did. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little broad um, explanation of, of what we did, how it kind of got started, and, um, you know, what ended up being Carnival of Excess. So uh, it, I really appreciate the support you guys have been showing me in the comments, and it's really been great that you guys want to hear this stuff. And like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep putting stuff out there, so subscribe and all that stuff and you know we'll see you in the next one i appreciate you tuning in and listening to this uh babble <laughs> all right take care you guys have a good day evening whatever it is you're doing i appreciate it thank you mm -hmm.